I had to start photography again, this is what I would do. My name is Neil and this is Photo How To, a channel completely dedicated to photography. If you've already started your first steps into photography, check out these videos which hopefully you will find useful. Now I'd like to sit here and paint a pretty picture and tell you this is easy, but I'd be lying. I have made plenty of mistakes over the years, including losing my whole portfolio, but that is for another video. I still cry about it. I can't believe I did it. What I have learned and what I want to share with you is the positives because let's be honest, no one likes to hear negatives unless it's funny. In today's video, I want to share some really useful tips that will hopefully help you take your first steps and throwing all cliches away to capture your journey as a photographer. My cheek really hurt. I started my photography journey eight years ago. Is that what it's been? It seems like a lifetime. My first camera was this little dude. The Nikon D3200. It's, it's not aged very well. This actually wasn't my camera. This is actually a stressed camera thing that I got. Not that I get stressed or anything, but it's the closest thing I had. The Nikon 3200. I think I sold it. It's gone. So yeah, apologies. I'm using props. <laughs> the shape really hurt. Let's see if it still works. Yep. This DSLR camera was built for beginners and it was perfect when I first started taking photographs. Really easy to use, camera settings were great, menus were really good to navigate, really user friendly. And obviously you've got aperture priority and shutter priority just to make your life a little bit easier when you're controlling the light. But for me, time has moved on and my camera gear has gone from one camera, one lens to God knows how many cameras and how many lenses. But what do you actually need to start your photography journey? So I'm now gonna take you through my five top tips just to get you started. Now. I have tried to shoot pretty much anything and everything. Well, almost everything. Which really brings me on nicely to my first tip. With pretty much everything that we do, it always takes practice. Lots and lots and lots. Lots of practice. Bet your skills. The best thing you can do is pick up your camera and just start shooting. Take lots of photographs. Photograph anything and everything. Well, almost everything. You can spend countless hours watching YouTube videos just like Hey, that's not funny. You will only really improve your skills and your knowledge, your technique and your creativity from behind the camera. Now you're probably sitting there scratching your head thinking, well, that's easier said than done. But first, you've got no idea what you want to shoot. And secondly, sorry, secondly, you have got no idea how to operate your camera. When I first started, my camera was attached to my hip and everywhere I went, my camera went with me. It gives you an opportunity to understand how your camera works, how the settings work, how you can control light, but also at the same time, it will give you a taste for different genres of photography. This video is not about going into camera settings. I wanna make that clear right now. It is not about camera settings. That is for another video, so please, hit the subscribe button, don't forget to hit the notification bell because I will be doing videos on camera settings to help you guys out. So the shutter speed, ISO and aperture, they're the three things you really need to know. If you understand how they work, you're gonna be able to take photographs, I promise. Now the great thing with going out with your camera is that two things are gonna happen. The first thing is you're gonna come home with images that are either be too dark, too bright, which is called overexposed or underexposed, or the blurred. But this is important. If you understand why these things are happening in your camera and how to overcome them, you're gonna be able to get your settings right the next time when you go out and shoot. Hands up, who's taken a candid photo? I've got no idea why I asked this question because I can't actually see who's put their hands up. Possibly a snap of your family standing in front of something really, really amazing. Now, if you were to remove your family out of that photograph and just keep what's ever in the background, you're removing the emotional attachment you have with that photograph. Question to you would be, does it actually mean anything now? What actually is photography? Ask that question to any photographer and I guarantee you, nine times out of 10, you'll get a different answer. If you were to ask it to me, I would simply say that it's a way of documenting your life and what you see, what you do, and what your interests are. And there you have it, what your interests are. That is photography. Because let's just be honest, if you weren't interested in something, you wouldn't take a photograph of it. Unless you're getting paid a lot of money, that is. So that's the key for me. When you're getting started, try and find something that interests you. I started off shooting small insects. Then I went on to sports photography. Then I started shooting portraits. 
a little bit of street photography, then I started shooting dancers. But now, my passion is in landscapes. Throughout our lives, we always have someone that will inspire us. There will be times when you are just not feeling it. You're staring at your camera, the camera's staring back at you. If your camera could stare back at you. Begging you to pick up his body and cradle the lens in your loving arms. Your warm arm caresses the long body up to the hood. Where is this going? But you just don't feel like it. The internet. Have you heard of this? Amazing virtual library. Accessible right across the world. Mind blowing. I want you to try something for me. In your search engine, type in your interest, e.g. sports. Afterwards, add the word photography and then hit the search button. <laughs> There's your inspiration. You have now got a load of photographs that are there to inspire you. Other photographers, fantastic, beautiful images. For me, when I've hit a brick wall and I've got no idea what I want to shoot, I usually pop onto Instagram. This is a fantastic resource for photographs and this has helped me generate ideas for creating my own shots or just going to visit certain places. As I've mentioned before, I like shooting landscapes. There's an abundance of information on social media and on the internet that you can use to help inspire you. And if you do see an image, you may feel like you're going and copying someone else's work. You won't, that won't happen because on the day you do your shoot, the weather may be different. You're using a different camera, a different lens, which will give you a different look. And the other thing also is the way you edit your shot is gonna be completely different to that photographer. Now you can have all the gear, but no idea. How many hours have you spent rolling through the internet looking at different types of camera gear? Which one's the right camera? The right lens? But then you thought, well, hang on a minute, accessories, I might need some spare batteries, memory cards, lens cleaner, lens cleaning cloth, maybe some filters? Oh, I definitely need a tripod. And one of those one-legged ones, what are they called? Yeah, I want a flash. Hey, what about a flash? Definitely need a camera bag. Maybe a spare camera bag. Oh, why I'm at it, might as well get my spare camera Actually, let's get some more lenses for it too. Next thing you know, you've got no money in your bank account and you've got too much gear, way too much gear. You don't need all that gear and the other thing also is you probably won't know how to use it my advice is start small all you need is one lens and one camera and that's it if you are starting out in photography you may not know what you want to shoot what i would recommend is get a camera that's within your budget and a mid-range lens 35 to 50 mil something like that then go out and start shooting after a while you're going to realize what your camera's capabilities are for example, you might find that the shutter rate isn't quick enough if you're shooting things that are fast. That tells you you need a more high spec camera that maybe shoots 10 to 20 frames per second. And then you've got your lens. Whatever you're shooting may be way off, way off in the distance. So that tells you you need a telephoto lens. But then you might be shooting something like a building and you can't get the whole building in the frame. That now tells you you need a wide angle lens. Starting with a mid-range lens will give you a little bit of flexibility when you're starting to shoot. The one lens I always use, my go-to lens, is the Nikon 24-70mm f2.8. I pretty much use this for most things, but obviously even with that lens, there are some restrictions. And hey, you don't have to go out and buy new. Second hand can be just as good. And there's nothing worse than going and blowing all your money on a high spec camera just to find out that it doesn't do what you want it to do. And what you'll end up with is a rather expensive doorstop. Find your path, find what interests you, then upgrade. It's, it's as simple, simple as that. that. And after a while, a few magical things will happen. You will soon discover what you really like to photograph. Then you will realize that the lens you've got may be restrictive, so you'll upgrade it and get the right lens. And finally, you'll create your own little shopping list of accessories, rather than buying everything <laughs> Salesman Joe told you to buy when you first bought your camera. Okay, so as I've mentioned, I'm not gonna go into camera settings, etc., on how to set your camera up. I have got a video if you've got a Nikon Z7 II, and to be honest, this is also relevant for the Z62. Check out my video on how to set up your Nikon Z72 because it goes through all the camera settings and how I would set my camera up to get me started. Over time, you may find that just shooting in JPEG isn't enough. You want to start editing your photographs, creating your own style and your identity. So you'll change from JPEG to RAW. What is RAW? Really, really quickly then. A JPEG file is smaller, but what you'll get is what you actually shot, how you saw it on the back of your camera. If you decide to shoot in RAW or NEF, the file size will be a lot bigger and this is because it retains more detail in your shop. However, when you see it on your computer, it will look flat. The vibrance, the saturation, it will look completely flat. What that does will give you a blank canvas to edit your shot and get it how you want it. Confusing? I've got another video coming out for that, so please do look out for that. So for now, let's go back to editing, or should I say, re-editing your shots. I have taken thousands of photographs. 
and I'm going to be completely honest with you. When I first edited my shots, I looked at them differently. But over the years, my experience and knowledge, my creativity has changed. I have gone back and re-edited these shots and in my opinion, made them look better. Usually I find if I edit my photograph straight away out of camera, I still have an emotional attachment to these images. So I don't really edit them the way that I want to edit them. And that's why I would recommend leaving them. Leave them four or five days if possible because the photograph you'll edit later I promise you will be so much better so when you first edit your shots and you throw them on social media let's be really honest you want some sort of feedback from people normally you want really good positive comments unfortunately the world's not like this and you will receive negative comments to be honest as a photographer this is disheartening photography has taught me one valuable lesson in life photography is about expression how you see the world and not everyone will see it the same way you do i think the main thing is to accept that we all see things differently at the end of the day if you're happy with a photograph you've taken that's all that matters the photography world is extremely diverse seen differently by everyone who has ever picked up a camera and you are now part of this my final tip is walk before you can run do not expect miracles photography is all about being patient and persevering there are so many different aspects to photography camera setting camera gear composition and light take really small steps and don't be afraid to experiment and one important thing failure is good it will help you understand what you can and can't achieve and having a strong understanding of these will help nurture your skills as you grow as a photographer. Photography is super exciting. Being able to capture moments in time is magical. And being able to look upon an image knowing that you took that shot gives you extreme pride and self-belief. Thank you for watching. I really hope you found this beneficial. Get out there, just start shooting. Believe in yourself, don't be afraid. Take those first steps, believe me. Once you've done it, the whole world's gonna open up to you. It's amazing. See you soon, guys. Toodle pip.